J'ai toujours aimé les belles îles. Mais certaines sont appelées. Comme cette banque like qui se fait comme un glaçon. Melting away like an ice cube. Dans l'Arctique, elle ne cesse de se faire plus grande. Il y a deux ans, elle a perdu une surface deux fois la France. À ce rythme, le pack antarctique pourrait disparaître avant 2030. Ou même 2015, selon certains scientifiques. Dans les régions de l'Ontario, depuis des milliers d'années, les espèces de l'Ontario ont adapté à vivre sous la glace, comme sur la glace. Leur survie est menacée par l'Ontario, comme sur la glace. Leur survie est menacée par l'Ontario, comme sur la glace. Leur survie est menacée par l'Ontario, comme sur la glace. And the animal on the front line is the polar bear. When the female gives birth to its babies, it hasn't eaten for months, and now has other mouths to feed. The staple diet of the seals they hunt on the ice. And this ice is now taking longer and longer to materialize. The polar bear's hunting season is therefore becoming ever shorter, and he's fasting longer. On average, the females now weigh 70 kilos less than 30 years ago. And their weakened state makes it hard for them to catch their prey. As a result, their little ones have less to eat. Many bear cubs now no longer make it to adulthood. Over the past few years, the polar bear's population of North Canada has diminished by one fourth, in great part because of climate change. You could ignore the polar bear's plight were it not for the fact that it's a very strong sign that something is definitely awry here on our planet. Something that concerns each and every one of us. The Inuits no longer recognize their land. So last year we did not get caribou. We harvest caribou in March and again in September. And uh, the caribou didn't come through at all in, our, in their migration route because of the weather changes, because of the ice, the way the ice freezes and thaws. Um, their migration route got changed, so our community was greatly affected in our food security, which is food security is, um, you know, we, we depend on the land for food. And when we don't have that food, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have food because it get, has to get flown into our community. I've seen uh, species of birds coming through southeast Alaska that uh, have never been spotted here before. And in the, in the saltwater environment, we're starting to see uh, semi-tropical fish show up at times. Um, I see it getting warmer up here. I think we'll have palm trees and bananas pretty soon if we keep going this way. <laughs> the future for these people of the north, or at the very least their traditional way of life, seems rather bleak. While the melting of the ice flows on the water doesn't alter the sea level, that isn't the case with the ice thawing upon the land. 99% of this ice is concentrated in Antarctica and Greenland. Scientists thought that this area would only slightly feel the effects of this thaw. They were wrong. In Greenland, the thaw has surpassed even the most pessimistic predictions. The water that flows into the sea has doubled in the past 10 years. At present, the ice melting in Greenland equals a flow rate somewhere between that of the Rhone and the Danube rivers. If only the ice in Greenland was to melt away entirely, the sea level would increase by 7 meters. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet, but the level of the oceans have already gone up. But there's no need to go so far afield to witness the melting of the glaciers. All of the massifs of France have been affected. 
dans les Alpes. Located in the Alps, at the foot of the Mont Blanc, the ice sea is one of the tourist attractions of the Chamonix Valley. It withdraws year after year. On average, it loses 5 meters in thickness annually. Since the 1980s, the thawing of the biggest French glacier has been speeding up dangerously. I was shocked to learn that the water from the thaw warms up the inside of the glacier and that the heating phenomenon therefore fuels itself. Along with the native of the Chamonix Valley, high mountain guide Denis Ducrot, I went to see what remained of this giant, who was vanishing before our very eyes. En permanence, ça bouge. Le glacier, il bouge. Le glacier, il avance. Il se modèle avec le glissement, la fonte, l'eau qui passe dessus. Et tout ça, c'est, c'est, ça paraît complètement. Look how beautiful it is. Look at the shape of the water current. It's magnificent. It shaped the ice. Denis, you live here and have seen the landscape change. Oui, c'est vrai que euh, les glaciers en ce moment sont dans une période de récession. On voit qu'ils sont beaucoup moins longs, beaucoup moins épais dans la partie euh, finale. Et c'est vrai que la montagne change de physionomie. Ça, c'est clair. Qu'est-ce qui a changé Bien, par exemple, euh, le glacier des Bossons où nous allions faire de l'école de glace, parce qu'il était très près du village et il avait une partie plate qui permettait ce genre d'exercice. Maintenant, il est inaccessible parce qu'il est, en, il est dangereux, il est un petit peu incliné, il est, il est un peu suspendu. J'ai entendu dire qu'il avait reculé de 700 mètres sur les 30, 35 dernières années. Voir la montagne, la regarder changer, voir les glaciers qui ne sont plus les mêmes, ça c'est vraiment un, un indicateur auquel on devrait être particulièrement attentif. To truly gauge the scope of this phenomenon, we journeyed through the ice sea. Three kilometers below, the glacier's tongue entirely disappears under a rug of rocks. A sight that violently contrasts with the memories of yesterday. A century ago, the first tourists came here to admire the glacier. Que le glacier était un truc majestueux qui faisait un kilomètre et demi de large et qui était beaucoup plus épais. On voit bien que la glace n'est pas loin là depuis cette arrivée. Et regardez un peu, là on est à peu près dans ce coin-là et avant c'était une énorme quantité de glace. Well, your job has changed a little because of climate change, hasn't it? Maintenant, enfin, ce qu'on appelle le, le permafrost qui se dégèle en profondeur, bien sûr quand ça touche des faces qui sont très inclinées, très raides, Ça fait des effondrements et l'aiguille des drues a connu des énormes effondrements. On voit bien la grande trace ah, grise. Ouais. Avant, là, c'était une voie d'escalade extraordinaire qui s'appelle le Pilier Bonatti, du nom du grand alpiniste italien qu'il avait ouvert dans les années 50. Et maintenant, le Pilier Bonatti n'existe plus. Tout simplement, il y a eu, je crois, quelque chose comme 200 000 mètres cubes de rochers qui sont tombés. The massif of the Mont Blanc is undergoing major transformations as a result of climate change. Even at 4,300 meters of altitude, high mountain glaciers like the Dome du Goutet are displaying worrying signs. That's what I understood when I met a team of asiologists from France's CNRS and Grenoble University. Blanc, rouge. Et marron, rouge. Ok. Tu l'as Ouais. Et donne-moi l'autre. Et puis l'autre, donc celle-là c'est 130 mètres et l'autre, donc la 5 et la 55 mètres. Ces chercheurs, These researchers are measuring the temperature of the glacier deep down below. Blanc, jaune, jaune, marron, jaune. Each color corresponds to an in-depth sensor. I'm waiting for it to stabilize. 47, 803. 47803. Ok. Et ça correspond à une température de moins 8,4, donc à 55 mètres de profondeur. Entre 1994 et 2005, il y avait déjà un réchauffement de 1 degré vers 55 mètres de profondeur. Et là, on a 
à nouveau un réchauffement donc de plus de degrés depuis 1994. Donc c'est assez important. And you were expecting this? On s'attendait à ce qu'il y ait un réchauffement, mais là, il est particulièrement fort. Oui. Et ça, ça peut déstabiliser le glacier s'il se met à glisser sur son so socle rocheux. C'est pas pour demain, mais euh, il est nécessaire de suivre l'évolution des températures pour voir comment ça peut évoluer. Et aussi, on a besoin de faire euh, des calculs pour savoir qu'est-ce qui peut se déstabiliser. On peut répéter... Euh que je vais te dire tout à l'heure sur les Pourquoi glaciers, les glaciers de haute montagne. The seemingly unchanging high mountain glaciers could eventually become a threat for the populations living down below. Such is the case for the village of Takona, located in the Chamonix Valley. Ce qui peut arriver, c'est que une grande zone du glacier soit déstabilisée et donc un volume de glace qui soit relargué vers l'aval, qui provoque une gigantesque avalanche de sérac. Et puis il y a un autre risque qui est lié aux poches d'eau. Alors là, c'est encore plus sournois, parce que ce sont des poches d'eau qui se forment à l'intérieur des glaciers. Et euh, ces poches d'eau, quelquefois, elles sont larguées. Il y a des vidanges brutales. Et ça a été le cas, bon, il y a longtemps, en 1892, sur le, un petit glacier, glacier de tête rousse qui est dans le massif du Mont Blanc. Mais ça fait quand même 175 morts euh, à Saint-Gervais. Actuellement, on fait une étude sur le glacier de tête rousse pour voir si ça pourrait recommencer. Ces poches d'eau qui peuvent faire 100, 200 000 mètres cubes, elles peuvent être relarguées d'un seul coup. Et là, ça fait la catastrophe. Fighting Dinghamwaku 30 Some rivers, like the Ganges and Brahmaputra, have experienced horrendous floods. All along their riverbeds, India and Bangladesh are prone to repeated floods. During the monsoon season, in summer, this water flowing all the way down to the Gulf of Bengal is capable of carrying everything in its path, villages and humans alike. I journeyed to Bangladesh, one of the countries most affected by climate change. It's a real injustice considering that this country emits less carbon dioxide than the city of New York. 200 rivers run through Bangladesh, including the incredibly strong Brahmaputra. Fueled by the accelerated melting of the Himalayan glaciers, its powerful rate of flow erodes the banks of its beds as well as the coast of the islands that dot it. Yves Mar, a former Air France steward who has been living in the north of the country, has seen for himself the increase of erosions and flooding. 
In the 15 years you've been navigating through the region, you've noticed a change in the climate? Personnellement, j'ai vécu une grande inondation en 1997. Terrible, l'inondation du siècle. En 1998, une grande inondation. Euh, en 2004, très grave inondation. 2006, grave inondation. 2007, deux inondations coup sur coup plus le cyclone. Et donc là, les gens ne savent plus à quel sens se vouer. Là, Now you can really tell that the island is falling in the river. Alors, les îles sont érodées par le fleuve. Et c'est typique de ce qui se passe en permanence ici sur les îles euh, du Brahmapoutre. Imaginez là, la côte est ici. L'année prochaine, elle sera un kilomètre plus à l'intérieur. Le champ va partir, la maison va partir, les arbres partent et eux vont se déplacer. Et ce sont, en quelque sorte, ce sont des, des, des réfugiés du fleuve. Bangladesh. Bangladesh is crumbling. Here they call it Mati Panga, the earth falling away. Entire pieces of the country are disappearing. Like in Kawabata, one of the thousands of river islands which are being eroded. Kawabata, 300 inhabitants. Here, people survive by fishing and farming. Mainly rice. Its inhabitants are fully aware that they're in limbo. The villages are more than likely doomed. As a local elder explained to me. Sir, you've seen the climate change, and this has caused a lot of problems for you. Are you worried for the future? দুর্ভিক্ষ An island doomed to vanish like thousands of others if nothing is done, affecting some four million farmers. So what's the solution for the four million people living off these islands? C'est une question énorme. Alors ce que l'on fait pour le moment, on part au plus pressé. Quand les maisons partent, eh bien on arrive tout de suite, on les reconstruit. Well, that's a small solution. What's the general solution? Alors la solution générale, eh bien écoutez, si on arrivait à creuser le bras poutrin, si on arrivait à draguer la rivière, eh bien déjà elle déborderait moins. Mais comment? How do you drag a river that's 30 kilometers wide? Alors voilà, il faut des moyens énormes. Et si cette, si ce pays était en Europe, je pense qu'on aurait trouvé la solution parce qu'on aurait trouvé les moyens. Mais ici, bon, bah, la communauté mondiale devrait peut-être euh, mettre la main à la poche. Ici, on paye euh, la taxe carbone en nature pour le monde entier. Pour soulager la misère de... To relieve the suffering of the river's forgotten victims, Yanmar set up an association financing a hospital boat. He offers free services to thousands of Bangladeshis every month, and there's always a crowd. The closest public dispensary is four hours via boat from here. So this boat is your life's dream. Oui, c'est une péniche française que j'ai récupérée et je l'ai amenée ici à travers toutes les mers. Hein. Et il m'a fallu trois mois et demi pour arriver jusque là. Et on a décidé de venir ici, au, au nord du, du Bangladesh, parce que c'est l'endroit où les gens sont le plus pauvres pratiquement du, du monde. C'est les pauvres des pauvres, c'est les gens qui sont complètement ignorés. Et ils n'avaient jamais vu de médecin, bien sûr. Et depuis que nous sommes là, on a vu pratiquement un million de personnes. Mais ça, One million Ce bateau pour eux, ça fait des miracles tous les jours. Hein. More than a miracle, it's a tour de force, born out of lots of love. Volunteer doctors relay each other to offer everything from dental care to the treatment of small injuries and the cataract operations. 
but the need is too great. And when land becomes scarce, there's no other choice than to leave. The result is a massive exodus towards the capital. A thousand farmers arrive here every day. We're now in Dhaka, the Bangladeshi capital. Officially, it's inhabited by 10 million people, but the real number is probably closer to 4 or 5 million more. In addition to the traditional exodus from the countryside, there's now the influx of climate refugees, packed in the slums. They're everywhere, even along the railway line. Dhaka is the world's biggest shantytown. Here, refugees from the north fleeing the rivers join the refugees from the south, those from the coast, who've been driven from their land by the rising water and the even more devastating hurricanes. In November 2007, Cyclone Cedar killed 3,700 and left 500,000 homeless. Most were from the entirely destroyed island of Bola. <laughs> Many survivors have found shelter in this slum. And our house was completely washed away. Why did you come to Dhaka? When they could sell their labor, they earn one euro fifty per day. But that's not every day. So they feed themselves as they can. The poorest among them buy chicken skins without the meat. But sometimes, even that is a luxury. The greatest irony is that one of the only small regular jobs available for climate refugees, that is constructing dams to protect Dhaka and their slum from the water, which is rising slowly yet relentlessly. With backing from UNICEF, a Bangladeshi ONG has started a program teaching children how to swim. As it might seem, they're not usually taught this skill here, the country of the crazy floods. Drowning is one of the first causes of infant mortality in the country after malnutrition. lost more than 17,000 kids every year in Bangladesh and which is uh, 46 uh, kids in every day and weather is changing in Bangladesh and for that why water is rising and uh, flood is coming every year which is one of the main cause of child death in Bangladesh. The association has already trained 35,000 children and the NGO is now considering extending this program to adults. But it's a tiny band-aid, a well-meaning yet trifling effort in the face of the enormous threat which is looming. Nearly half of the land in Bangladesh is at less than one meter above sea level. 
If the waters were to rise by 40 centimeters before 2050, a hypothesis deemed entirely possible by experts, then 20% of the country would be underwater. And there would then be 20 million more climate refugees. Where will they go? What future is there for the men and women of this ever-shrinking country? Time is running out for Bangladesh. I cannot believe my eyes. Girl, the Since they share the same language as on the other side of the border, many Bangladeshis want to immigrate to India. But the largest democracy in the world is proving less than welcoming. It recently built a demarcation line that is ever more hermetic. And there's a curfew from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. No one's allowed to come near. The Indian border guards can shoot on all those trying to pass through. Officially, these security measures are to fend off infiltrations by Islamic terrorists. But they're also against refugees forced to flee because of rising water levels. There are several dozen deaths every year, and mistakes are legion. Farmers at the border are often the victims of blunders. Yet to be fair, it must be said that India is having to grapple with equally serious problems linked to climate change. Water levels are also rising on the Indian coastline. In the Ganges Delta, the archipelago of Sudarbans encompassed around a hundred islands. But some have now disappeared. Sheikh Lal Mohan was one of the 10,000 inhabitants of the island of Lohachara. Back in 2006, it was the first island in the world ever to be swallowed up by the sea. Lal Moan and his family, like most of the inhabitants of Lohachara, found shelter on the biggest island of the archipelago, Sagar. This is the first officially censused climate refugee camp in the world. 1,200 families live here. The local government gave him a house and a plot of land. Nothing like what they had before. But they had no choice. And unfortunately, there'll be more and more climatic refugees in the Sunderbans. In 10 years' time, 60,000 people will have to leave their land because of rising water levels. A fact confirmed in Calcutta, three hours by car north of the Sunderbans. The Bengalese capital also provides shelter for climate refugees. 
One of these neighborhoods has been renamed Little Sunderband. At the Oceanographic Department of his university, Professor Hazra undertook the first study of the impact of climate change on the islands of the Delta. By comparing the maps of the archipelago with satellite pictures, he was able to measure the erosion of the land by the rising sea levels. So I could see that from if I, when I checked the satellite image of 1996, you can see that the same place, south of Goramara, there's no island at all. I mean, what, what has happened actually, I thought, that, uh, I mean, has it vanished or it is, has been submerged in the high tide or it has been eroded or mm. is, there is some error. You can see the, the yeah, change, huh? There are the changes and you can, we can map like this that, well, the, all the southern islands, these two islands, the Lohachara Bedford, is va vanished from the map, whereas Ghoramara is vanishing very fast, mm. eroding very fast, being submerged. The southern part of Shagor Island has it's also been, 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 yeah. This Jambudip has vanished, I mean, vanishing. In 30 years, the island system mm. has lost 86 square kilometers in spite of some deposition mm. or accretion here and there. Goramara. Goramara will probably be the next island to disappear. In less than 15 years, half of the island will be gnawed by the sea. At the island's post office, a real institution established in 1940 and still sporting a letterbox from the British colonial era, the postman keeps seeing his round changed around and piles of undistributed post grow. He doesn't know which doors to knock on anymore. The few dams built around the coast are overflowed by the slightest sea storm. Farmers have done their best to protect their crops. But it's a lost battle. Many must abandon their land. You must be very optimistic or naive to plan your future in Goramara. These children will almost certainly have to leave their island. But their teacher still has hope. His class on climate change explains to the bemused students what they must do if they want to continue living in the Gulf of Bengal. The new slogan in the Sunderbands is One Tree, One Life. An NGO is planting mangroves to fight erosion. 22 million plants have already been planted on 12,000 hectares. A real race against the clock to stabilize the ground. But at the water level's current rate of increase, this at best leaves just a few years respite. There's really no solution to save the Sunderbands. 
But global warming isn't just affecting the Gulf of Bengal. In the country's capital, New Delhi, I went to Terry, a research institute on energy and natural resources. Its director is an eminent scientist, repeatedly rewarded for his work as well as his cricket skills. The current president of the GIEC, a group bringing together thousands of climate experts from 130 nations, Dr. Pashuri has received on its behalf the Nobel Peace Prize for its work on global warming. A phenomenon affecting the Indian subcontinent as well as the rest of the world. What are the most important consequences of climate change that you can see here in India? Well, we have a range of impacts on India. I mean, the melting of the Himalayan uh, snows, the rising sea levels. India has a long coastline. We have problems of impacts on agriculture and changes in the patterns of the monsoons. You know, there are hundreds of millions of farmers in this country, perhaps about 400 million farmers, who are dependent entirely on rainfall. So with changes in the rainfall patterns, uh, their lives are going to be shattered. What would you say to the people watching you on television to convince them that the climate is changing right now and it's mainly as a result of our way of living? I think if the people realize that in Africa, in parts of Asia, there are people who are going to become climate refugees. These are human beings. They are not just numbers. They are living under very difficult conditions. And they have not done nothing to bring about this problem of climate change. They have hardly used any energy, any fossil fuels. So therefore, I think there is firstly the ethical dimension. French people must understand that there is a set of ethics involved over here. They must understand that if there is going to be chaos in the developing countries, in the poorest regions of the world, then it is going to affect everyone, including France. So let's work together and let's find solutions. And let's do it with a sense of urgency, because we have very little time. I get the impression that it's not an emergency, yet you're saying that we must change in the next seven years. Seven years is very brief. Yes, it, it is certainly a matter, matter of enormous urgency. We have to invest in public transport. We have to redesign our cities. We have to redesign our buildings. Our buildings are energy guzzlers. Shopping malls that we have, we are copying them from the United States. It's stupid. And we have to change this. And we have to change our way of living. I mean, I've been telling everybody, and this is not very popular, eat less meat. You've got to start with yourself. The world is eating too much meat. The average consumption of meat uh, over the whole population of this world is 43 kilograms per year. That's too much. And the entire meat cycle is very intensive in the emissions of greenhouse gases. So I keep telling people, eat less meat, you will be healthier and so would the planet. One day a week without meat. And I think it's little things like this. If we bring about change, we realize how important it is for us to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Well, you're also pro-boycotting companies who aren't making any efforts at all. I believe that. You know, I, I think these solutions to a problem like climate change cannot come from nation states. It has to come from the grassroots level. It has to come from the people. And I think if it comes from the people, then our leaders will also hear their voice. I believe that for something as important as climate change, you have to have a grassroots movement. And yes, if there are companies who are doing the wrong things, they should be boycotted. I think their products should not be purchased by anybody in the market. And I hope people are able to do that. KBS 电视台
共三集系列纪录片《大自然的建筑师》，将放大自然界的微小空间，前进生物们的家，看看他们伟大的手艺是如何盖出设计精巧的巢穴，让人类刮目相看。每周六上午八点，下午五点半。大自然的建筑师。Dr. Pashuri's message is aimed at us all. We must stop thinking we'll escape the phenomenon that is already affecting far-flung lands. Everything is linked. We're all in the same boat. What French person is unaware that the shoreline of the Camargue is experiencing the fastest erosion rate in the world, and that France is struck by a growing number of gusts of wind and tornadoes? The great storm of 1999 has not been forgotten. With climate change, cyclones, hurricanes, and typhoons are multiplying throughout all the continents, becoming ever more violent and deadly in the process. I thought I was immune for that because I'm an ecologist. But in the last couple of years, I've really seen thunderstorms、uh, like they never appeared, at least not in the last 30 or 40 years. And I've seen damage. I've seen roofs taken off the houses. I've seen、uh, flooding, flash flooding that was so quick that people could not even save their lives.、Uh, so I think that that、uh, impressed me the most because、uh, sometimes when you、uh, talk. About climate change and do do calculations on the paper.、Uh, oh, it, it looks scary, but in real life,、uh, you just feel it. It is so real. It is so here, and we have to do something about it. 那这这一次的莫拉克台风，呃，严重到就是可以说，在两秒两秒钟的时间，就就毁灭了我们整个部落，也走了二十几个人的人，人二十几条人命，对。哦，这无同的现象就是讲，咱其实安尼看安尼雨安尼吼，拢未停，落雨拢落未停，啊，一直都一直都一直都无一个空间讲休困一个时间拢无，都一直都这三天的时间就是一直都一直都。就透早落到暗时，暗时落到透早安尼，吼、哦，这个现象是较早风台所无的现象，因为较早风台是安那，是伊来时阵可能是一天，还是一天外，啊，啊这粒唔是，这粒未来甲结束，拄啊足足拖四五天，所以讲伊的雨量足恐怖，安尼。On in August 2009, Taiwan was struck by the worst typhoon in its history. More than 600 people died, and thousands of others were left homeless. These shocking pictures of a natural disaster made headline news. Unfortunately, because they now occur so often, we're starting to become jaded. But the foremost victims of climate change, the most numerous, aren't those we might think. All is calm in the countryside of North Mali. Too calm. Nowadays, there's little cattle in the pasture. There really is no pasture. Everything is scorched, desert-like. The rain hasn't come out for months, and the nomads haven't found their usual watering holes. Everything is dry. Today, the rain has filled up the ponds, but it's too late. The weather pattern has been unsettled for the past two months, which is fatal in this extreme climate. Three shepherds from this tribe died of thirst this summer. Al Karim gathers the last remnants of his flock. Am mungkin nanti nanti nak kemar tak mara dia tak ada tiri. 
اوي جند غوات ايداش يهيمنا يبانا جنا جروان غبانا جنا وججين وججين هو اللي عندي هذا النركب نهال لا ين الا ينندخ في لسن نركب لسن نركب افل جادي ودنتي صار دغ الوقت جري اجشان تجيضم تار الزجاري تام تار الزج ان غيلا تنغي تجيضم تني بانا شكشو Al-Karim Al had never experienced so many deaths. Luckily, he still had a female camel. Her milk feeds the family. Along with the goat's milk, it forms the base of their diet. He, his wife, and his five children only eat one meal per day. <laughs> As a result of global warming, the famine, the famine which had virtually disappeared in Africa has returned. The malnutrition is growing rampant among the nomads, a population usually not affected by food shortages. This woman, Aramat, has lost almost everything. She's walked nearly a day to bring her baby to this center in North Gao, opened by Action Contre la Faim. The French NGO has launched an emergency program to detect undernourished children. And that day, it was swamped with people. So everyone was waiting, worried, for hours on end. So finally, it's Aramat's turn. She's being looked after by the program coordinator. Just by glancing at the child, he knows this is an emergency. A fact confirmed by its measurements. Four kilograms to at seven months. The weight of a healthy newborn for nearly the same size. 58 centimeters. The little one is at an advanced stage of malnutrition. In order to save the little girl, she must be fed a hypercalorific substance made with peanut butter. According to the NGO, nearly half of the nomad children in this region of Mali are suffering from chronic malnutrition. The mother, who's also underweight, will be given a bag of cereal that should last her two weeks. She'll then have to return if her camp isn't too far away. Unfortunately, Aramat's family has decided to leave and search for fresh pastures and watering holes, which are becoming ever more scarce. Over the past 30 years, this part of the Sahel has completely changed. There was a gigantic pond here in the 1970s. And over there, a forest as far as the eye could see with big cats and giraffes. And in the past, there wasn't a single grain of sand in this village. The old men of the camp know that everything went wrong. In the heart of all their discussions, of all their worries, the same obsession. The lack of water. الناس ولا شكاسة جودين دغ الناس تفوك تفوك تارغ الناس ولا شكاسة جودين دغ تكنا ديهف 
ये हम जो इंदौर ना जाते रहे इस मात्र शकासी जा आई जाऊँ ना हरी जुड़ी आई जाऊँ ना तकना तकास पहले दें हरी जुड़ी अन्ना सा अन्ना सा रहते हैं ना अन्ना तो मार से हम इसी सोल वाली जितने जोखता ना जीव ताजिये लासा अन्ना सा इंतने दार को दो जोखरे नितान माया ये कबू वाकना कर बन्ना सा और काबे ना तो हेल्थ इंदौर ना सा आसी हम इसी ना सा सोल देते हैं वो इसी उसी here they may be facing the end of an age-old way of life and what the nomads feel in the pit of their stomachs scientists have confirmed yes there is a climate change it's raining half as much as before in the north and in the more humid south the rainy season is briefer the rainfall is more intense and sparse often ruining the farmers efforts I saw this firsthand when I visited the cotton fields, a four-hour ride south of Bamako. Why are they singing? It's magnificent because the noise of the pickaxe really echoes the sound. Altogether, it's really magnificent. They all look very happy when in reality they've experienced a very difficult year. See, during these last few years, with a month and a half of rain instead of three, the harvest was bad, yielding less than half than usual. Another bane for Mali, where one out of four people rely on cotton for their livelihood. Hello? The authorities have therefore decided to launch an ambitious plan to adapt to climate change. First, by tailoring the weather bulletins to the farmer's need. Every morning at 7 a.m., everyone tunes in to their radio. Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour. Bienvenue à ce bulletin d'information, présentation syriatique et traoré. Des pluies intermittentes, parfois orageuses, sont attendues à Bamako. This is gospel for the farmers. When should they sow? When should they harvest? All the answers are here. Les paysans dans le temps, pour comprendre un peu euh, la campagne hivernale, se référaient soit au cri des oiseaux ou à la floraison de certains arbres. Aujourd'hui, avec euh, les longues sécheresses des années 70, euh, le paysan a perdu ses repères. Aujourd'hui, le paysan, son seul repère, c'est ses conseils et avis. Les conseils et avis météo sont consommés comme on consomme le pain dans la grande ville. Women even listen to the bulletins before doing the washing to know how best to use the rainwater. In return, the farmers are asked to help the weather forecast. In every village, there is now a rain gauge and an eyewitness farmer who calls in every morning to indicate how much rain has fallen. Hello? Salamato, oui, salamato. Quarante-cinq mètres de pluie. Elle tombe à Djefin. 
It's become a ritual for thousands of farmers. They've come together throughout the country, all the way to under the talking tree. Even the Griot, the village's traditional storytellers who transmit family stories from generation to generation, have been asked to help spread the good word. Quand nous on veut les expliquer quelque chose, justement, c'est c'est des exemples terre à terre et qu'on a vécu dans le village. On dit, mais vous savez, ici là, derrière nous, on venait tout petit, on venait nous baigner dans ce marigold. Ah oui, c'est vrai. Mais on dit, mais où se trouve Ah, mais c'est vrai. Le marigold, il a disparu. Hein. Donc vous voyez, donc. Il y a le changement climatique, donc le monde même change. Donc par rapport à ça, il faudrait que vous aussi vous changez.气候变迁已经不只是科学家的理论，连台湾也感受到气候的异常。气候变异影响每一个地区，地球上没有人可以置身事外。地球的明天，地球的未来会是怎样的面貌？三月十号、十一号，周四周五晚间十点全记录《地